before we get started on this video, I just wanted to let you know this is a pre-recorded video from another course. Therefore, it may not be the best, but all of the information that you need should be included. This video is going to focus on the site work for your house in Revit. So let's get started. So let's begin by going to the home page and scrolling down until we get to site and photorealistic renderings. Again, don't forget your previous assignments. Here are your new assignments. This assignment is not open yet until after I finish all of the videos for this section, but you can go ahead and get started on your site after watching this video. Again, you need to read lesson 14 on site tools and photorealistic renderings. And then of course the video when I get done will be posted here and there will be additional videos added after this video. So let's get started with the site tools. So the site tools in Revit are not intended to be an advanced site development package. Autodesk has other programs which are much more capable of developing complex sites such as AutoCAD 3D Sybil. We will create a topography object from scratch and we'll add site elements to it. Once the topography object is created, the grade line will automatically show up in building and wall sections, exterior elevations, and site plans. The sections will even have the earth pattern filled in below the grade line. As with other Revit elements, you can select the object after it is created and set various properties for it, such as surface material, etc. One can also return to sketch mode to refine or correct the surface. This is done in the same way most other sketched objects are edited by selecting the item and clicking edit on the options bar. The, we're gonna be going to this tab here. It's called massing and site. Below here, it explains what each of these tools are. If we talk about a topo surface, basically this is the contour of the earth where it goes up and down, makes hills and valleys. So with Revit, you can do that. You can make hills, you can make valleys, you can change things. We're going to keep ours very, very simple. So Revit has a tool to help us do that. This one right here called topo surface, and we'll get into that in a minute. The next thing is a subregion. This allows an area to be defined with a previously drawn topo surface. So we can take our topo surface and we can make subregions within that topo surface. And that's what we're going to do to make our sidewalks and our driveways and things like that. There are some other tools that we're not going to use that are available. Split surface, merge surface, and graded region. I'm gonna let you read about those yourself. We will be putting in our property line. We talked about our property initially in the preliminary design and said that it is to be 200 feet by 200 feet. So we will do that. Sometimes when we're doing our buildings, we even though we put floors, basements, things like that, sometimes the grade will go ahead and come inside of our building. Um, there is a tool for a building pad that we can add in there that will alleviate that problem. Site component, this is where if you look up here, you have site component, just kind of like with doors and windows, you want to pull all your site elements from the site component, not from the general component. Um, it has lots of different things in it that you might not find under just your regular components. And then you can even go in and label contours as far as elevations, things like that. We are not going to do that. So that is the first part of this assignment is to familiarize yourself with the site tools. So we can go even further with this. We can set the site settings. So if we want to see the contours at every foot, we can do that. If we want to see them at every five feet, we can do that. So that's what this is all talking about, is how we're going to set those contours. We're going to leave ours with the default because we're not going to have a lot of slope to our site. If you still want to do like a walkout basement, um, I will help you with that, but you will have to get in touch with me and we will have to do it as a separate, separate thing. Um, contour line display, section graphics, elevation of poche base, and property data. Again, these are all things that you need to read in the assignment, read in the book to familiarize yourselves with. The next part is actually talking about creating the topography. So that's what we're going to do next. Before we get into the site, we need to think about what we kind of want to do. 
So I took my plan and I looked at my house and on my house my main level is at zero feet zero inches. Typically our porches and decks and things like that are going to be at least six to seven inches below our floor level. We do this for a couple of reasons. One, we don't want water coming in and so like if we have a porch and water would pond here it could potentially run back into the house so if you look where you live there's probably a step down of some sort at that point the other thing is typically our garage is also going to be lower than the rest of our house we're not going to do that because of the time constraints so we're leaving our garage at zero feet zero inches so I need to think about where I want my decks and my driveway and my sidewalks and things like that. So I kind of just went in and sketched. I printed out a, a copy of my plan and I went in and kind of sketched in purple where I want these to be. Now I can do fillets here. I can come out here to my, side, my driveway and make it a curved driveway. Um, etc. But the main entry to our property, if you go back to the preliminary information, is from the south, which is this direction. So for now, what I'm concerned about are the grades at my house. So if I put zero feet, zero inches where my first floor and my garage are at, then I want to drop down here on this deck. And again, I'm keeping this very, very simple and I'm keeping my grade very simple it's going to make things a lot easier. If you want to do a walkout, you need to get with me and we'll look at things differently. So I put a porch out here in the front and I'm going to come back in and add some columns and my roof over this, etc. Um, at some point. But for now, I've decided that this is about the approximate size that I want my porch to be. And I'm going to have a sidewalk that comes off of it and joins to the driveway because when guests come over they park in the driveway and they need to be able to walk to the entry. Um, I'm going to have my driveway at least at this point coming straight out from my house. I may curve it as it goes down depending on where trees are at, things like that. I have two doors out the back of my house. I have a sliding door here that I want to have a nice little deck out here. And then I also have a door coming out of my garage and I need to have some concrete or something there so I'm just going to connect these two together. So the first thing I want to do, like I said, I have zero feet, zero inches on my floors and then I have negative seven inches on my slabs here. Now here I need to remain when I'm coming out of my garage at my zero feet, zero inches. So those are my starting points. The other thing we want to have happen is we want our grade to slope away from our house. We want the dirt to slope away so that when it rains it doesn't come back up into the house. So typically, and we'll go back to the assignment on this here in a minute, but this slab is going to be four to six inches thick. So if I think about that, I want my grade to come in and hit my slab somewhere in that depth. So if I have my pad here at negative seven inches and I come back here to the corner and I drop down two inches, then that's going to put these corners at negative nine inches. So then from there, I want it to slope away. So I've came out to these two corners to do negative 10 inches. I've done the same thing over here, going from this corner to here to negative 10 inches. From this corner here to negative 11 inches. From this corner here to negative 12 inches. And then I kind of kept this straight because I am going to come out here and add some points out here that are going to make it slope off even more. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. And then I've kind of worked my way back around doing the same thing here. Now when I get over to here I have a little bit different situation because I need to be at zero here. So I'm going to have about a nine inch slope from here to here, which is fine. That's not too significant at all. Um, that's actually a very gentle slope. And so at this point I want to be at zero, at this corner I want to be at zero, this corner I want to be at zero. So if I'm out here and I'm at negative 10 and then I'm going to be at negative 9 here and here, I'm going to go negative 9.5 here in the corner and then I'm going to go to negative 10 here. So I'm going to have a 10 inch slope from here to here, which again is not a significant slope. So I highly recommend that you do something 
on a piece of paper, print out your house, put some points in, and get it worked out before you start the site. It's going to make it so much easier. So what I did here was I went into my first floor and I kind of sketched in what I want by using my annotation detail lines. These are lines that will only show up in the plan and I can get rid of them later. They will not show up in my 3D view, but it gives me a guide. Um, and I did them on my first floor because it was easier to see where my doors and such are at. We're actually going to be working in our site plan. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy these to my site plan. So to do that, it's very simple. I'm going to select all of these lines that I drew by holding down the control key. And I'm gonna go right up here to my copy tool, copy to clipboard. Then I'm gonna to go to my site plan and you'll see I'm looking at my roof. That's why it's hard for me to see where these exact points are and how I want to do this on my site plan. So now I can go to paste and do align to selected levels and it's gonna let me pick my site plan and I say okay and now I see those lines that I added. I still can't see exactly where my walls are at but if I come in here and I do range base level and I select first floor and hit apply and then I come in here and I do hide in view category then it's gonna hide all my roofs I still cannot see where my doors are exactly so again that's why I like to have these guidelines so now I'm ready to get started in my site plan the one thing I want to do is I want to make sure that my visibility is set to fine so that I can see everything I need to see. And I want to go in and set my view range. Now the view range has to do with what we can see and what our cutting planes are and things like that. Again, most of the time we really don't need to do this, but I wanted to show you how to do this. So I want to go in here to my view range and I have associated first floor level and it has 200 feet and it has 200 feet here and then here it says zero feet zero inches and then here I want to change this to be unlimited that way it doesn't limit where it starts and stops my view what this is basically telling me is what I see here these relate to what's here again most of the time we don't need to modify any of this because our buildings are not that big but if they were to be really really large this would be important to do so we typically want to go ahead and check that so now I am ready to start so again like we talked about we're gonna go to massing and site and at this point is where I want to be sure and have my little sketch that I did in front of me so that I can make sure and do things properly. So the first thing I need to do is I need to determine my property line. If you remember back in our preliminary assignment, we had a property of 200 feet by 200 feet. Well, you'll see right here under massing and site, we actually have a property line tool. So if I click on that, it gives me a couple of choices. One, I can create it by entering distances and bearings, meaning I would have to have some site and topographic information to be able to do that, like a survey. Or you can do it by sketching. We're just gonna do ours by sketching. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna kinda draw, if I use my rectangle tool, it makes it a little bit better. And I'm just gonna kinda draw this in for right now. Then I'm going to make the adjustments by clicking on this, dragging my dimension line, my temporary dimension line, and I want this to be 200 feet. And then in this direction, I'm going to drag my dimension line, and I want it to be 200 feet. So you see I have a pretty good sized property, but right now I don't really have my house placed in it the way I want it. So I'm gonna grab all of this, hold down the control key, and I'm gonna do move, and I'm gonna kinda of pick here in the middle, and I'm going to actually kinda of center it and pull it back on my property a little bit. Something about like that. So you can place your property line anywhere that you want, and you can move it after the fact. 
The only thing is, once we kind of do our topography, you don't really want to try to move it, because then that's going to cause you problems. So I'm going to leave mine as it is, and I'm going to do a check mark. So now you can see it actually created a property line for me. Again, this only shows up on my site plan in my two-dimensional drawings. It does not show up in my three-dimensional drawings. So now that I have done this, and again, if I want to edit that, I can click on it and do edit sketch and, and modify that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to start creating my topo surface. So I'm going to click here. And you'll notice that it talks about placing a point. And you see I have a little point now with my cursor. So right here, it talks about elevation. That's what I was talking about on my sketch where I had zero feet, zero inches. I had um, negative seven inches. Right here, I'm going to start and I'm gonna put this back to zero. And I know I have zero at this corner. So now you see I placed a point, and I'm going to come over here to this corner, and I'm going to place a point. And I had zero here, but I could actually probably drop this down at this point. So I'm going to go to negative two inches. And you have to make sure that you put in negative and you put in inches, not feet. So I'm going to place that one at negative two inches. And then I'm going to come over here, and this one I wanted at negative 9 inches. So I'm going to put in my negative 9 inches, and I'm going to click here. And then out here at the edge of where I'm going to put my walk, or my um, porch, I want negative 10 inches. And then I want negative 10 over here. And then I want to go back to negative 9 over here and here actually sorry and then over here I want to go back to negative 10 and over here I want to go back to negative 11 and over here I'm going to go to negative 12 or I could put in one foot either way doesn't matter and then I'm gonna put the same over here and then I'm going to go back to negative 11 inches at this corner and back to negative 10 at this corner and back to negative 9 at this corner and back to negative 10 at this corner and negative 10 at this corner and then I'm going to do negative 9.5 at this corner and I'm going to do negative 9 at this corner and I'm going to do negative 9 at this corner back to negative 10 at this corner and then I'm back to zero. So you see it created this topo line going around here. Now, to finish out my site, I have to continue the topos within this whole function. I don't get out and then do the next set of, of um, topos. So again, I wanna just have a very gradual slope from what I've done around my house here out to the edges of my property line. So the lowest point I had out here was negative 12. So I'm going to change this to negative 18 inches. And I'm going to come out here and I am just going to pick some random points. And then I'm going to come out here and I'm going to do negative 2 feet. And pick the very corners of my property. Once I have all of that completed, then I can click on my check mark. So looking at this, it really doesn't look like it did anything other than my property line went from a um, property type line type to a solid line type. But if I go to my 3D view, you can see now I have a big piece of dirt, basically. If I look up here by my house, um, again, I can kind of see where that's sloping. 
things like that. So one thing that I need to do, first of all, is right now I'm seeing part of my foundation. And that would be probably true in a lot of cases, but since we're doing renderings, we don't really want to see the dirt or the foundation. So if I select this wall, and I change my base extension distance. The lowest I went out here was 12 inches, so I'm gonna go negative 14 inches, and that's gonna pull this finish down to where I don't see the foundation. So I need to do that for all of my walls. I'm not gonna take the time to do that, um, but just so you know, you come over here to base extension, and I'm doing negative 14 inches. And I will just go ahead and do it on a few walls just so that when I do my rendering it looks somewhat decent. Okay, so I went ahead and extended my walls down, etc. So now I'm going to go back to my first floor and I'm going to go ahead and put in these two patios. So this is actually done through the floor command. So if we go to architecture and we go to floor and we go to floor architectural and I'm just gonna put in concrete slabs if you want to do a wood deck or something you'll have to do something differently right here we have concrete slab that's basically what a porch is in most cases so again it's four inches which should work with the dimensions that I used so now I'm going to um, before I do that I need to right now it's set it um, first floor remember I wanted this to be down seven inches so I'm going to change this to negative seven inches so that it offsets it from the first floor and let's say apply and then I'm going to copy this rectangle that I had drawn now all I got to do is click the check mark and if I go back to my 3d view you see now I have the slab out in front of that and if you look closely here, my grade is coming up because my slab is actually thicker than my grade. So it's meeting up to it, which is what I want. So now I'm going to go back to my first floor again. And I'm going to make this slab. So again, I'm going to go to architecture. I'm going to go to floor. And this time I'm going to use my sketch tool because it's not a rectangle and I'm just gonna kinda follow the lines on here. That's another good reason for using the detail lines to be able to trace. And I do have to go all the way around and close it back off. So now, if I go to my 3D view and I go around to the back, I have another slab back here. And again, I have a little bit of offset where you would step off of the slab onto the grade because I'm going to put grass here, so it's going to make it um, a little bit different. Um, if I were doing this, I would have some kind of a covered porch area here with some columns possibly out here covering this entry. You need to have that on yours. If I go back to the site plan, for my driveway and my sidewalks, I'm going to do those differently. The next things we're going to start looking at are the actual materials and finishes and such. So I'm going to do that in a separate video.